Welcome to Mikon's hardware. Unfortunately, these days I don't have any options to show up on the camera, but my video materials are waiting for a few weeks already. Thus, I have decided to make it audio only. Anyway, I think most of you are here for the FPS numbers and technical details, and not for my face. If you are here for my face though, then welcome to watch some other videos from my channel where I am present. Ok, so in this video I am going to compare two different CPUs in 22 games. The first CPU is Intel Core i5-10400F and the other one is Xeon E5 2690V3. Core i5-10400F has 6 cores, 12 threads and a maximum turbo frequency of 4.3 GHz. In the games the CPU clock will be about 3.9-4.1 GHz, depends on how many CPU cores are utilized. The CPU was tested on my MSI Z590A Pro motherboard and the memory speed was DDR4-3466 CL14. Still, it is important to mention that even the cheapest B560 motherboards have ability to overclock memory with the locked Intel Core CPUs. Thus, it is not required to buy expensive Z490 or Z590 motherboards to overclock memory with Core i5-10400F and you can achieve the same level of performance with a cheap B560 motherboard. It is also worth mentioning that the Intel stock cooler is good enough to cool down i5-10400F under gaming conditions. Of course, if you run your CPU power unrestricted under heavy workloads, this cooler will not be enough, but under gaming conditions when the CPU cores are not loaded 100% all the time, this Intel stock cooler does its job. Xeon E5 2690V3 is probably one of the most interesting Xeon CPUs for the LJ2011 version 3 platform. It has 12 cores, 24 threads, and the maximum turbo frequency is 3.5 GHz. 3.5 GHz is slightly faster than 3.3 GHz of the very popular Xeon E5 2678V3, which is a copy of Xeon E5 2680V3 but with a DDR3 memory support. When I was doing my benchmarks, Xeon E5 2690V3 cost at about 100 euros, but right now the price has dropped a bit and it costs about 80 euros. The motherboard prices are still not the best though, and unfortunately we don't have any new options to test, a part of what have already been tested. As you can imagine, these 12 cores running at 3.5 GHz require a motherboard with at least semi-decent VRM. I strongly do not recommend to install E5 2690V3 on cheap motherboards such as Machinist X99 RS9. Instead, something more decent is required. The lowest I would go is Huanan G X99ZD4, then we also have X99BD4, AD4, X99TF and F8. I have tested my E5 2690V3 using Tinsha X99D8. Unfortunately, this motherboard is no longer in stock and not longer in production, thus you can't buy it. But the performance is identical to any other motherboard which is able to hold this E5 2690V3, even if the motherboard uses cheap B85 chipset. Of course, you also need to keep in mind that Xeon E5 does not come with a stock cooler and you need to buy one on your own. For this comparison, I have tested 22 games at 1080p using my AMD RX 6800 XT graphics card. All tests were executed three times and I used the average value across three runs. Here, I am going to focus on Xeon E5 2690V3 compared to Core i5 10400F, but you will also see Ryzen 5 5600X results on your screen. If you're interested, there will be a text version of this benchmark on my website, and there you will also find Core i9 9900 QQLS results. Let's start with Battlefield 5. Here, Core i5 delivers 85 and 159 FPS. Xeon E5 gives us 50 and 149 FPS. Even though the average FPS is kinda the same between both of the CPUs, the difference is just 10 FPS, Xeon E5 is not able to match 1% lows of Core i5. 50 against 85 FPS. Red Dead Redemption 2. Core i5 gives us 33 and 103 FPS. Xeon E5 delivers 31 and 116 FPS. All in all, Red Dead Redemption 2 is a very GPU demanding game, and here both of the CPUs are delivering very similar performance. Still, Xeon E5 was about 10 FPS faster on average, while minimals were slightly better with Core i5. GTA 5. This is a very old and not optimized game. You can expect stutters and lags with basically any hardware. Here, Core i5 delivers 58 and 166 FPS, while Xeon i5 is lagging behind with 49 and 147 FPS. In this old and unoptimized game, Xeon does not stand a chance against Core i5, it lags behind by 25 FPS. 
Far Cry New Dawn, yet another game which is able to use only a few CPU cores. Core i5 delivers 72 and 100 FPS, Xeon i5 gives us 60 and 83 FPS. Once again, Xeon i5 2690v3 is about 25 FPS behind Core i5 10400F. Assassin's Creed Odyssey, another DirectX 11 game which does not know how to use many CPU cores. Core i5 delivers 26 and 72 FPS, Xeon i5 gives 24 and 63 FPS. This time Xeon i5 loses to Core i5 only about 10 FPS, but the difference is still significant when we are talking about 30-60 FPS on average. Assassin's Creed Valhalla, on the other hand, is a much newer title which is very well optimized for multi-core CPUs. Here, 6-core i5 gives us 65 and 105 FPS, while 12 cores Xeon e5 delivers 76 and 118 FPS. Even though the game is much more demanding to computer hardware, it delivers better gaming experience and demonstrates that with good optimization, 12-core Xeon e5 can beat 6-core Core i5. Watch Dogs Legion. It seems like this game shares at least some code with Assassin's Creed Valhalla because the average performance between Core i5 and Xeon i5 is very similar. Core i5 gives us 58 and 90 FPS, while Xeon i5 delivers 72 and 101 FPS. Once again, we can see that in games which are optimized for multi core CPU, Xeon i5 2690v3 is about 1015 FPS faster than Core i5 10400F. Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Sage. Core i5 delivers 243 and 351 FPS. Xeon i5 gives us 318 and 386 FPS. Honestly, I thought that in Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Sage, Xeon would not stand a chance to Core i5, but it turns out that Xeon is even slightly faster. Nevertheless, in certain scenes, Core i5, which has lower memory latency and faster memory speed, comes on top of Xeon e5. Anno 1800. Unfortunately, this game does not provide minimal FPS value, but it does provide average FPS in different sections of the game. Thus, I am reporting minimal average FPS per section and the total average FPS. Here, Core i5 delivers 130 and 146 FPS, Xeon i5 has very similar results, 131 and 149 FPS. All in all, both of the CPUs are providing almost identical performance. In certain cases, Xeon i5 is slightly better, in other cases, Core i5 is slightly better. Immortals Phoenix Rising. This is an example of a horribly optimized game. All of the CPU cores are doing something, but the overall gaming performance is just horrible. Core i5 delivers 23 and 75 FPS, Xeon i5 delivers only 16 and 64 FPS. Even though all of the CPU cores are doing something, Xeon i5 still loses about 10 FPS to Core i5. F1 2021. In the previous benchmarks where I compared Core i5 10400F against Core i9 9900 QQLS Mutant, I screwed something up and the graphical settings with Core i5 were not correct. That's why I had to retest the game, and here are the correct numbers. Core i5 delivers 230 and 282 FPS, while Xeon i5 is only able to deliver 209 and 267 FPS. Both of the CPUs are able to deliver more than 200 FPS at all times, but still, Core i5 is about 25 FPS faster. Forza Horizon 4 Core i5 delivers 160 and 178 FPS, Xeon i5 delivers 152 and 175 FPS. Yet again, we can see that in these fast-paced racing games, Xeon is not able to match Core i5, still the performance with both of the CPUs is very decent. Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Core i5 delivers 99 and 141 FPS, while Xeon i5 gives us only 79 and 127 FPS. Even though the game is kinda optimized for the multi-core CPUs, and in this case almost every CPU core is doing something, 6-core Core i5 comes on top and it is faster than Xeon e5 by about 10 to 20 FPS depends on the scene. Total War 3 Kingdoms. Here, Core i5 gives us 94 and 117 FPS, while Xeon e5 has 93 and 119 FPS. Another game where both of the CPUs are delivering almost identical performance. Minimal FPS a tiny bit better with Core i5, average FPS is a tiny bit better with the Xeon e5. Horizon Zero Dawn. This game is also very CPU intensive, and here, Core i5 gives us 63 and 127 FPS while Xeon i5 is slightly better with the 70 and 142 FPS. The game is able to properly utilize multiple CPU cores, which gives Xeon i5 an advantage and it comes on top by 5 to 15 FPS. 
Hitman 2. Unfortunately, while benchmarking z 2690 v3, something happened with my video capture card. The recorded video has too many artifacts and I'm not able to show it. Thus, I'm demonstrating only a craft. i5 10400F delivers 48 and 138 FPS, while z e 5 has 41 and 119 FPS. Even though Hitman 2 is able to load multiple CPU cores and it is a very CPU demanding title, 12 core Xeon i5 2690 v3 is not able to match 6 core core i5 10400F. The difference between the CPUs is 5 to 15 FPS. Metro Exodus Core i5 gives us 62 and 119 FPS, Xeon i5 delivers 67 and 117 FPS. One more game where the performance between these two CPUs is very identical. But this time, minimal FPS is slightly better with the 12 core Xeon, while the average FPS is slightly better with the 6 core Core i5. Age of Empires 2 Definitive Edition This is a very old and very not optimized game which does not use more than a single CPU core. Core i5 gives us 16 and 56 FPS, while Xeon i5 gives us 18 and 45 FPS. It is unexpected, but the minimal FPS is slightly better with the Xeon CPU, but on average it loses to Core i5 10 to 15 FPS. Digital Combat Simulator Core i5 delivers 78 and 145 FPS, while Xeon i5 is only able to provide 58 and 142 FPS. This DirectX 11 game is also not optimized for multi core CPU, and 1% lows are about 20 FPS better with Core i5 compared to Xeon i5. Gears 5 Core i5 delivers 90 and 143 FPS, while Xeon e5 gives us only 62 and 142 FPS. One more game where Xeon e5 2690v3 is struggling to catch up with Core i5 10400F. This time the difference between the CPUs is rather significant, it goes up to 35 FPS. Combining all 20 games together, we are getting the following result. Core i5 on average in these 20 games delivers 87 141 FPS. Xeon e5 gives us 84 and 138 FPS. As you can see, the difference between the two CPUs is very minimal, and I would say it's a great result for Xeon e5 2690v3, which is much older than Core i5 10400F. Still, it is fascinating to see how far the gaming CPUs have moved on. A modern Core i5 with just 6 CPU cores running at about 4 GHz is able to beat aging Xeon e5 with the 12 cores which are running at 3.5 GHz. As usual, let's take a look at the power consumption during the Assassin's Creed Valhalla benchmark. Here, entire system with Core i5 10400F consumed about 310 watt of electricity. The same configuration under the same test with the Xeon e5 2690v3 consumes about 360 watt. Thus, we can see that even though the performance between 10400F and 2690v3 is about the same. Xeon E5 requires additional 50 watt of electricity to provide this level of performance. It is also possible to undervolt Core i5 10400F, and in that configuration, the system power consumption will be even lower. I have also tested Final Fantasy VII and Call of Duty Modern Warfare, which did not go into the 20 games average results. Final Fantasy VII does not provide FPS results, thus I can't calculate it. Instead, the gaming benchmark provides us two values. The first one is how much time a CPU consumes to load the gaming scenes, and the second one is just the CPU score. Here, Core i5 consumed 17 seconds to load the gaming scenes and scored 23,000 points. Xeon e5 consumed one extra second, 18 seconds to load the scenes, and scored only 20,000 points. Even though Final Fantasy VII benchmark does not provide FPS values, we can look at a MSI afterburner overlay, and here we can see that i5 10400F is often about 20-30 FPS faster than Xeon e5 2690v3. And the last game, Call of Duty Modern Warfare, has got some updates to ban some cheaters, and after this update, MSI Afterburner is no longer compatible with this game. The game also does not have built-in benchmark, thus testing this game is rather complicated. Still, the game has its own FPS counter, which can be used to roughly compare the performance, even though it's not accurate enough to include into the average results. According to this in-game FPS counter, Core i5 10400F is constantly and consistently faster than Xeon i5 2690v3. The gap between the CPUs is 20-30 FPS. 
So what can I say in the conclusion? Both of the CPUs are good and both of the CPUs are interesting and have their own use. If you're looking for a gaming computer, then I would say Core i5-10400F is a better option. On the other hand, if you need a workstation with lots of memory and lots of PCI Express lanes but still want to be able to play the games, then Xeon i 2690 v 3 is a great option. Price-wise, it all comes down to how much money you would have to pay for Core i5, how much money you would have to pay for Xeon e5, how much import VAT you have to pay in your country, maybe you already have some components which you can use in your system, for example a CPU cooler, or maybe you have some old DDR4 memory. Thus, it all comes to the individual preferences and to the individual cases. You need to do your own research and your own calculations and make sure that you're buying the best value option. Personally, I like both of the CPUs, but unfortunately with the current Xeon E5 and X99 motherboard prices, building a gaming computer from scratch based on LJ2011 version 3 platform makes no sense. For you though, I recommend to buy what makes more sense and what gives you more value for your money. With this, I would like to say thanks for watching, thanks for listening, I hope it was interesting, I hope it helps someone make their decision, goodbye.